really, yeah, right? Yeah, more, sure, Mortar Pod, but, like, his other two drops, Honor of the Pure, Intangible Virtue, Shrine of Loyal Legions, these don't actually do anything. Right, yeah, Mortar, like, Mortar Pod only does something to the board if, if they have something for you to yeah. do. So, Bernal has a turn two Heartless Summoning. Yep. Caleb has a turn to honor the pure to get in for two with his Doom Traveler, but... Joe does not care about that two just yet. No, that that Heartless Summoning is going to start going off unless Caleb has one of his two Oblivion Rings for it. Uh, there's also a Sword of War in Peace in Caleb's deck, which is uh, not usual, but, you know, just another threat out of this token's deck, different way to attack. Going to see a Looting? That's a Faithless Looting for Joe. Looting is one of those cards that almost immediately got pushed into um, the Eternal formats. Yes. Where it was like, oh, I guess we're going to have a card for our dredge deck that we <laughs> didn't even need. Guess we we're already playing Careful Study, so we'll just take a bonus. Um, Joe plays a Swamp. That is a second Heartless Summoning. Let's see. Caleb's tapping two on his turn for another Honor the Pure. That's going to push his guys past an Elishmar, potentially. Right now, Joe is actually um, in a position where he is able to have four free mana for the purpose of any card that he might lay um, from his hand. All he has to do is actually have something in his hand to lay. Caleb looks like he's, he's stuck on land here, though. He only has two. And as I was saying, there's not much he can do on two that uh, pushes through anything on board. And we see a uh, rune scarred demon. Rune scarred demon tutoring up a metamorph, tutoring up a metamorph, tutoring up a phantasmal image. Yeah, this is the uh, the old metamorph chain with double heartless. Uh, so both of his metamorphs that he's cast here are at the cost of two life and zero mana. So he's just making an army of air elementals, 4-4 uh, four, four flying, copies of the demon that tutor up another copy of the clone. Is that, a, is that a phantasmal image on the far side? Yeah, he does have one phantasmal image. Yeah, so uh, that is a 16 power board of Runescar demon copies. And another... Uh, Another trigger probably going to resolve, and we may have missed what he got there. Caleb untaps with his two lands to uh, the 16 power. I mean, if he drew a balance, he'd still be in bad shape. <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, I, a balance? Yeah, yeah I mean, a balance would probably put him somewhere. I mean, um, let's assume he didn't get uh, DQ'd for casting balance. <laughs> like, he would still oh, be old, in bad shape. The old Antoine Ruel uh, <laughs> Ancestral Recall you, die anyways. <laughs> Joe Bernal taps three mana for a lethal Elish Norn and is going to send for... Uh, that's 24 in the air. Um, to Caleb's... A lot of four in the air. So, yeah, 24 and... Yeah, Caleb packs it in. Yeah, Caleb stuck there on mana. Um, Joe exploding out with double heartless summoning. Yeah, that card when it when it gets going is very very lethal. Uh, looking at sideboards here, Caleb has a lot of spot removals. He's got three Doom Blades, two Celestial Purges, two Revoke Existence. Purge and Revoke are definitely coming in for these heartless summonings. Um, he has Actually, four. Pardon, sorry, interrupting. That's actually a really good point about Celestial Purge as a Heartless Summoning answer because the thing that's awesome about Celestial Purge is, yes, it can kill a Heartless Summoning, but it can kill a, a yeah. demon, you know? Like, it can kill an Inferno Titan if in another deck, yeah. not this deck, but, you know. It can kill Liliana it can, in yeah. this deck. Um, and the Revoke can also kill a Warm Coil Engine or, you know, a, met a Metamorph. So there's little things they can do. Uh, he also has, you know, six Graveyard Hate spells here. Surgicals and Nihil Spell Bombs. I don't know how many of each of these are coming in. I like his Day of Judgment, too. I mean, like, if you have Day and yeah, Nihil Spell Bomb, yeah. I mean, the question is... He might just board in 11 cards here. This Doom Blade's in... Maybe the Mirror Crusader, too. Uh, so he might just not board in Doom Blade and have the other 12 cards come in and turn into a different deck. I think if I were him, I would 
probably take out my, well, I was going to say my Doomed Traveler, but yeah, I think Doomed Traveler is not great here. Yeah. Normally, Doomed Traveler is an awesome card for this style of deck because it is essentially kind of a ravenous rat style effect. It yeah. takes out some card, and then it takes out some other card, and it, it doesn't feel like very much, but it matters. It just does a little bit of a little bit of something on the early turns to right. get you going. But, but he that's, doesn't need that. He's, like, he's fighting a different fight. This is Battlecruiser magic. This absolutely. is not Grinder magic. And like what he's going to win off of is he's, he's going to have a couple of enchantments out, and then he's going to have either a hero or a sacrifice of a shrine to make yeah. a, a, a bunch even, of damage happen. Even just a lingering souls. Yeah, or a white sun, whatever yeah. the case may be, yeah. right? It's going to be about him having a couple of enchantments in play mm -hmm. and having those enchantments make him have a huge amount of power on the table. Yeah. So, I mean, him having a Day of Judgment is not problematic if he's going to be like, let's wipe up the board yep. and like just wait a couple more turns. Meanwhile, we got Joe, who will probably also consider... Oh, look at that ancient grudge in the board. Uh, I don't really Ooh, like that. I'm just looking at it. I'm not, yeah, I'm not talking four? about it for the matchup. I'm... In the single forest? <laughs> uh, That's so... awesome. A forest to cast ancient grudge and other things in the board. There's two the obli flashback. Oblivion Ring definitely coming in. Yes. Day of Judgment probably coming in. Um, maybe Mimic Vat? I, uh, I don't think... I don't like Mimic Vat it's... very much. I mean, he's not going to... Well, it's a good defense against Day of Judgment. It's, but he doesn't know Day of Judgment's there. Yeah, that's true. Um, I probably, yeah, I wouldn't board it in the dark. I would board in Consecrated Sphinx. That guy's a boss. Yeah, I mean, for a Consecrated Sphinx against a deck like Caleb's deck, unless Caleb has, because did, actually, did Joe actually see any black, or did he just see white? There was an Isolated Chapel. So he I, saw black, okay. Yeah. So he might f think about a card like Doomblade, but um, other than a card like Doomblade, a Consecrated Sphinx on the table is immediately yeah. going to re recoup cards. Right. And then if it's not answered, the game will end. Most of these tokens decks don't even have Doomblades in the main. They're mostly just a bunch of guys and maybe some Oblivion. Yeah, yeah. I'm mostly thinking from Joe's perspective of would he even yeah. fear a Doomblade? Probably not. Yeah. Also, uh, Haven Gold Lich might make an appearance. There's one in Joe's sideboard. Um, I don't think he's going to assume that this matchup's going to grind that long, but I can see that being <coughs> the kind of thing if it goes to a game three because of the damage difference that this Haven Gold Lich comes in. <coughs> so I'm expecting uh, two Consecrated Sphinx, two Oblivion Rings, and a Day of Judgment to come in over here. Maybe Warm Coil Engine. I think Joe's going to board out Liliana. I can't imagine that. Yeah, Liliana. I mean, when you see token. Doomed Traveler and you see <laughs> uh, like Enchantment, or, like you just. You know that what's going to happen is the very worst creature. Let's pretend that Joe thinks that his opponent is is like a, a human's deck. Yeah. The very worst creature dying is not great. Yeah. It's you know they're going to plus one and they're going to be like okay I'll discard a lingering souls or something and just flash it back or you know and maybe not even lingering souls maybe that one's too good. Yeah. Just some card that doesn't really matter or maybe they've just emptied their hand by then and you know oh minus two make you edict away what a creature that doesn't matter. They're all interchangeable. So it looks like we're. Uh, off here, game two, Joe Bernal up 1-0, uh, and Caleb is going to be on the play. Uh, let's see here. Caleb Mulligan. Goes to six, and uh, Joe shuffling around his hand. Uh, let's see. Looks like he might be keeping. Um, oh, the see. old pile shuffle. Yeah. The old seven. And in the background of Caleb Crotz, you can see Caleb Durwood playing a different feature match. <laughs> I was talking with, uh, I'll say, um, renowned, mostly retired deck builder Brian Kowal. And mostly of, retired? Well, <laughs> how many people really quit? I know, magic? I know. He was posting uh, <laughs> about, like, I'm just going to show up to the GP. And yeah. <laughs> no, he, uh,. Mostly retired is a good way to put it. Yeah, and like he said, actually, I believe that Koal right now is in Baltimore just to watch Magic. Just to watch? He's <laughs> yes. not even playing. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, does it actually count as quitting Magic if you travel halfway across the country to watch Magic tournaments? No, you're just a member of the, uh, <laughs> what, what was it, Sam Saad said, uh, American Railroad Society of America? <laughs> um, but he, he was saying, uh, Koal was saying that Caleb Durward is one of his favorite deck builders yes, these days. He's, he's very good. Uh, Caleb Krotz leads on a Isolated Chapel to Joe responding with a Evolving Wilds. Another Isolated Chapel from Caleb tapped means he probably isn't going to have any action. Yeah, for pretty, pretty slow here. start here for Caleb. Yeah, you know, as you were saying, his deck doesn't have a lot on two. Probably didn't want Doom Traveler on one here, so he's probably just looking to play threes, fours, fives up the curb. Uh, I guess Joe he doesn't really finds have fives, the planes. Threes and fours all the rest of the day. 
Jovernal activates his Evolving Wilds, which post board could actually get any basic. There's one force in the sideboard. He was jokingly considering a uh, Autumn's Veil. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Joe's deck features black, 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 blue, blue, white, white, and it's mana costs. <laughs> and there's a Heartless Summoning on two again for Joe with a Dark Slick Shores. Caleb on three plays a Mirror and Crusader off a Vault of the Archangels. I'm not sure, but I think the Scritch Scratch in Joe's uh, sideboard, he scratched something out. I think it was an Autumn's Veil. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. No, I'm not. Uh, we see the Mirren Crusader in play for Caleb. The thing about Mirren Crusader that's just incredible is if you're talking about a deck that can pump it up, a pumped Mirren Crusader does so much damage. It does. Double Strike, I mean, you know, well, just doubles, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Faithless. Yep, Joe Faithless Lootings. Let's see what he draws here. It looks like a Worm Coil Engine and an unknown card. Worm Coil Engine, he has two of in the main deck, and he could potentially board more in. Yeah. Um, I actually have no idea if I like it or don't like it against this deck. It doesn't really interact in combat, but the lifelink might actually matter in a yeah. racing scenario. Um, <clears throat> on the subject of lifelink, Vault of the Archangels is awesome. Oh, totally, totally. Um, I know that there were some people that were kind of poo-pooing uh, Vault of the Archangel, but... One of the things that I think is so impressive about it is that you're not going to necessarily activate it against a deck that you're just beating the tar out of. Yeah. But if you're in a race situation, it really puts your opponent in an untenable position. Yeah. They can't just block, you know? <laughs> like. Yeah, you just activate it once and they gain enough life to win the race. Uh, Joe's discarding, looks like a Whip Flare and a Solemn Simulacrum. Okay. I was thinking... Uh, this is probably going to be another pretty copy good card. of... Uh, oh, Heartless Summoning. Double Heartless Summoning. He can Ooh, wow. put eight mana worth of creatures into play next turn. Well, an eight mana creature into play next turn yeah. if he has a uh, More realistically, a mana. an eight mana creature and then a bunch of copies of it. Or seven <laughs> mana creature and a bunch of copies of it. Caleb just crashes in for four with his Mirror and Crusader. Leaves up uh, mana representing maybe Midnight Haunting. Joe and we have three. Elish Norn die, 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 Mirren Crusader. Yep. Joe drops a second basic, his second basic planes in his deck and plays Elish Norn. You know, like a, like a boss. The mana phases in this format are awesome. Caleb drops a, another isolated chapel and Day of Judgment's away the Elish Norn. That almost seems premature. Uh, it's only four damage coming at him. Actually, yeah, but, three damage. Three damage coming at him. Two. Double Heartless. Oh, double Heartless, you're right, two damage. <laughs> yeah, but if that Elish Norn's in play, Caleb can't really get anywhere, and Joe just gets to set up with... You know. Well, I don't know what's in Caleb's hand, but Caleb could do things like, for example, that's four mana he's dropping, right? He could do something like lay a White Sun, or not White Sun, um, lay a, uh, a White Shrine, or sure. lay an Equipment. Um, granted, no, he does not know what his opponent's deck is, so because they're, you know, he already saw Blue Mana in the first game, who knows, maybe his opponent mm -hmm. has, you know, Counter Magic. This is the old uh, Solemn Simulacrum as a makeshift cultivate almost. Uh, you play it with two Heartlesses in play for free, minus four to play, dies immediately, and uh, the uh, death trigger actually stacks on top of the uh, comes into play trigger. What do you think of the Heartless Summoning Havangul Lich or, combo decks? Uh, those decks? They're a lot better than I expected. I actually might have that wrong on the, the stacking. I don't remember if... The sequencing on one Ooh. state face effects checker. A that. two mana, four, four, heartless, wor heartless, worm, I can't coil. Be, worm coil engine. I can't that's, see. That's gonna heartless make much, summoning worm coil It's going to make much less threatening one one tokens instead of three threes when it ties. Yeah, that touch and lifelink on uh, creatures is pretty good. <laughs> As evidenced by both sides of the board. Right, right. Caleb tapping two. Three? Are we going to see an Oblivion Ring? Mirror and Crusader? Which does not die, because there is no longer a Elish Norn around. Yeah. It does not fight this Worm Coil engine very well, though. Joe draws a Swamp. It looks like another Elish Norn in his hand, though. Oh, ouch. Getting a little excited about casting it and just setting up. Yeah, I, don't, I think that white card has to be an Elish Norn. Ponders again. It sees... Another Elish Norn in a Liliana. Good God. He might just play the Liliana here and, uh, no, not overextend <coughs> into another Wrath. Um, I and mean, once you see a single Wrath, it does change the way you play when you're a deck like this. Yeah. 
I, I find it interesting that there's Liliana in his deck post board, but it's possible he just didn't board. Yeah, I mean, he might Sphinx. not have very many things to actually bring in. Yeah, he, he may have just left Sphinx on the board. Nope, just going to cast <laughs> this Elish Norn. It just is such you. a kick in the teeth when an Elish Norn wipes your board. It doesn't matter if it's one creature or if it's four creatures. It yeah. feels just as bad both ways. Especially I mean, when they attack right after. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that look from Caleb. He's like, oh, yeah. just lets out a breath. Yep. Consternation and frustration right there. Let's see. Yeah, he's, uh, oh, just passing the turn back. Oh, this is, uh, this is eight. That's you know, six, eight. Puts him down to, uh, six life and very, very dead very, very soon. I mean, uh, now uh, Joe has the, the luxury just to flash back a Heartless Summoning if he wants, or do something uh, faithless else. Faithless Looting, you mean? Yeah. Faithless Looting, not so. Yeah. I keep... Heartless Summoning is too fun to say, I guess. And uh, Joe's probably just going to drop Liliana here, plus one it, and keep this Elish Norn back so that he has exact lethal when he uh, has the next turn. There's the Lily. We're going to see the discard of an Elish? No, probably Faithless Looting. Or is that we got oh, is that a land, one? yeah. Caleb drops his hand. Uh, there we go. All cards that don't beat an Elishnorn. And uh, that's that. Uh, yeah. I remember you talking um, yesterday when I was talking about my blue-white control deck and how I felt like I was grinding out black-white tokens decks. And you were a little bit surprised by that. But one of the reasons is the same thing that happens here with Joe Bernal. Once you weather the initial storm, if there even is one, and they're a little bit slower on that initial storm. 